Councillor, you don't have this bill, no? Yeah, so it's the Deputies Thomas Pringle and Joan Collins are the next speakers. <coughs> Thank you, Lars Cancorla, and I welcome the opportunity to contribute to the debate today on the, the TTIP. And this debate certainly has been a long time coming and to the floor of the doll. And um, it's interesting that it's only in the dying days of the <coughs> this doll that a, a short bit of time is actually allowed for it. Um, much, <coughs> much has been made of, of the investor state dispute mechanism in relation to TTIP and a lot of public outcry has focused on how that actually provides for secret tribunals that corporations can take uh, states, to, states to court for, for blocking their, their commercial interests and their business interests. And it's interesting when you look at the ISDS systems and under the other free, free trade agreements, 60% of ISDS cases are actually won by the corporations when they're taken, taken when they take states to courts to the to the court on, on that system. But I think there's been a reaction then to the actual public outcry in relation to ISDS, and um, <clears throat> there is also included in the TTIP negotiations what I believe is a, an equally insidious system of regulatory cooperation between the sides that will enable decisions to be made without public oversight or engagement. Businesses will be involved in, from the beginning of this secretive process will, well before any public debate takes place and will have excellent opportunities to ditch important initiatives. And that is regulatory con convergence that is included within the TTIP negotiations. There are three main provisions within that. One is mutual recognition, it means basically that there has to be mutual recognition of standards on both sides of the trade blocks. Then there's a, the harmonisation, where there has to be a harmonisation of those standards. And I know the government and the EU will make much of the fact that uh, EU regulations are a lot higher than, than, and a lot more stringent in terms of food and food production than they are in the US, and that'll be a benefit, a benefit to us in relation to it. But if there's mutual recognition and then harmonisation follows, the pressure will be to, for that harmonisation to drag down the higher standard to meet the lower standard uh, rather than the other way around. And also then we have the regulatory co cooperation, which is the third aspect of regulatory convergence. <clears throat> and under, under TTIP's chap chapter on regulatory cooperation, any future measure that could lead us towards, a, say for example, a more sustainable food system could be deemed to be a barrier to trade and could be rejected before it even reaches the light of day. Under regulatory con convergence, Businesses at an early stage can try to block the rules intended to prevent, the, for example, the food industry from marketing food stuff with, stuff with toxic substances or regulations to protect consumers. These would typically be classified as non-tariff barriers, and the new regulations would undergo an impact assessment, primarily tilted towards the interests of business, and should, should it go against their interests, the report will have to cite a detrimental impact on transatlantic trade as a, ra as a rationale. The EU model gives, <coughs> gives business many tools that will allow them to object to, uh, to an envisaged or planned regulatory act or even regulations which are under review. A regulatory exchange must take place and if a party is unhappy with the effect of the proposed rule on its trade, and, trade interests. And a dialogue must take place take place and the party whose rules are under attack must has no choice but to cooperate with that dialogue so business then can propose their own regulations and seek to re, 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 rewrite the existing ones. The European Commission proposes to ensure compliance with this chapter by all authorities, at, by authorities at, at levels of government lower than EU member state and US state level as well, municipalities and regional authorities. And this will broaden the scope of regulatory cooperation to affect city planning, public procurement, natural resources and environmental policies at a very local level. This process, uh, as I see it in the regula regulatory convergence, would render ISDS redundant in the long term uh, as business will be able to effectively intervene at the drafting stage of new regulations or legislation, bringing forward their own proposals uh, or regulation and bring forward amended proposals for existing regulations. At the very least, having revealed, revealed pending rule changes and given careful consideration to businesses' response, governments would be susceptible to re regulatory chill with the threat of ISDS cases then hanging over them if, they didn't, if the, the corporation didn't agree with what they had been proposing. And I think that you have to look at, you have to look at this TTIP negotiation and all the other free trade negotiations in the context of the overall globalization across the, across the world and also in the context of the growing inequality across the world as well. And Deputy Boyd Barrett outlined where 63 people hold a, a more wealth than half the population of the rest of the world than 3.5 billion people. And that system and growth and income inequality and growth and disparity across the world has deepened as all these free trade 
agreements have, have rolled out. And there's, there's no doubt, and I have no doubt, that TTIP is another step along that road to strengthen that inequality. inequality and for Thank that you. reason alone, we should be opposing it. Good morning, Deputy